Hey, I'm Keith. Thanks for watching this DVD today. Those segments you just saw, the concerts and crowds, the rock and roll bands and record deals, those were once my life. I was all about that. That's what I live for. The fame and fortune, the glory, and all those great things that came along with them. Things that actually, well, weren't that great at all. Things like alcohol and drug and pornography addictions, empty and meaningless sexual relationships, things like abusiveness, loneliness, isolation, things like rejection and depression and suicidal tendencies, anger, divorce, maybe even death itself. Do any of these things sound familiar to you? Are you or have you ever struggled with any of them? If you're like me and everyone else I know, I'm sure you have. Hey, how about just a few more minutes of your time right here and right now, because I wanna show you something, something about that time in my life, who I was and what I became. Let's check it out. It was no mistake when Keith Pintar turned on a one-way street headed in the wrong direction. I didn't really care if I killed myself or if I killed anybody else at that point. The pain was just so bad, the rejection, the anger, the depression. Keith's anger took root when he was eight years old. His mother was a violinist for the Miami Beach Philharmonic until multiple sclerosis quickly left her bedridden. Keith knew his mother was dying. And she'd call me to her bed every day in the last few months of things and say, Keith, I'm so sad that I'm not gonna be able to see you grow up and become a man. And uh, I didn't know how to deal with it. I became angry and, and mad at God and cursing God. His mother suffered for three and a half years until she passed away. I remember being at the funeral, not shedding a tear. I knew she died, but I was in denial as far as dealing with it. At first, Keith's father, Frank, tried to comfort him, but that quickly changed when Frank could no longer deal with the loss. What is wrong with you? I thought I'd He'd be in my face and just raging on me and yelling at me. And he'd tell me, you're dirty, lousy, good for nothing. You'll never be anything when you grow up. Do you hear me? Just something up here just said, I'm gonna show you what a dirty, lousy, good for nothing really is. Keith's grades dropped and he started smoking marijuana. And it did lead to opium, to mushrooms, to uh, acid, to cocaine, to all these different drugs. Uh, the police brought me home many times. In high school, Keith started playing guitar in heavy metal bands. I'm gonna be a rock musician, a rock star, and then I won't have any worries. I won't have to deal with this anger, this depression, this, um, this stuffing, this loss, this volcano that could erupt at any time. When he was 17, the fights with his father became physical. A year later, Keith moved out. He started playing in a band called U.S. Toys. It threw him full force into the rock and roll lifestyle. But all the drugs and failed relationships left Keith devastated. And I couldn't sleep because I was so high. Finally, I'd pass out, wake up at noon or 2 o'clock the next day, and I'd have blood all over my pillow from snorting so much cocaine. And so I would play Russian roulette. Sometimes I'd put one in the chamber and just spin it and just mess around with it. Keith occasionally called home. His stepmother, Elizabeth, shared the gospel with him. I told Keith, I said, I want you to have that personal relationship with Jesus that I have. Keith wouldn't listen. He still blamed God for his mother's death. Then one night, Overcome by depression, he went on a suicide mission. I got in my truck and I threw it into first gear and I got on a one-way street, Main Street in Columbus, Ohio, and just started going into one-way traffic, not really caring. There was traffic coming at me full on and I remember just closing my eyes and swerving back and forth and I, I really didn't care. I fully expected to get slammed by a truck Keith made it through the traffic without a scratch. He pulled over at a payphone and called home. And so I said, um, Elizabeth, I, I'm so depressed. I just feel like killing myself. No. 
Elizabeth opened her Bible to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. She told Keith how God had a plan and purpose for his life. As she was talking to me about the Lord, I felt this warmth just come from the top of my head through my body, just to the toes of my feet. And I remember saying, Elizabeth, this is incredible, this feeling, it's, it's awesome. I feel like everything's gonna be okay. The next day, Keith jumped on a plane to his parents' home in Miami. But while he was there, Keith knew he was in a spiritual battle. So every evening, Elizabeth would talk to me about the Lord and I'd go to bed just on cloud nine. But I'd go to bed and I'd have these horrific nightmares, just really bad. I mean, demonic, with literally just the fires of, of hell. Frank and Elizabeth sent Keith to a Christian rehab center. And I went to the prayer room one night, about three in the morning. And uh, I remember in that prayer room, the presence of God being so powerful. And all at once, I remember just, just started just weeping and um, crying. And I hadn't cried in a long time. And as I accepted Christ, in my life right then at that prayer room and then the next night at a church service I went to the altar. God, I want to feel your presence. I want to follow you. After Keith accepted Jesus as his Savior, he made a deal with God concerning his guitar skills. If you'll use those things that now I know there's a gift that you've given me, um, I'll serve you. Keith immediately saw God's blessings in his life. He did heal me of the drugs. Uh, instantaneously. When I saw the transformation in Keith, that just made me just so happy and just so wonderful. And as he promised, Keith used his music to encourage others to follow Christ. And I was playing in the worship band at the church and it felt good, it felt right, it felt like that was the missing piece. Keith's life was finally going in the right direction. He met his wife, Christy, and began opening for popular Christian bands. Then in 1994, his dad came to his church. All at once, he just got up in the middle of the row, we were sitting next to him, and uh, got up and started walking in front of us to the aisle and then towards the stage. And I was, we were just all frozen, like, oh my gosh, this is the real deal. I thought, now I am going to live a different life, knowing that I had Christ in my, in my soul. I know that God needed for my father to see the incredible change that his spirit had done in me to essentially lead him to the Lord. I'm very, very proud of him. I'm elated more than I ever could be that what he is doing, the music for God that is playing the music for him. I play him a new song that God's given me and he's just blessed and so it's just good. It's just real good. It's totally different. Oh, Jesus, come In that father-son relationship that we always wanted but never knew how to get, God knew how to get it and give it. You know, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, religion again. Here he goes with the God thing, Christianity. But you know what? That's not what it's about. It's not about religion, not at all. It's about a relationship, a personal relationship that I know about and now have. A relationship that set me free from all those things, those things that really weren't so great at all. A relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're captive to any of those addictions, those vices we talked about earlier, here's what Jesus Christ says to you. I've come to set the captives free. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Would you like to be free? Free of those things that are holding you down? Do you want to have that relationship with Jesus Christ like I have? then you know what? Why don't you pray with me? Just follow along 
and say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe that you are my Lord and my Savior, that you died on the cross for me personally at Calvary. And Lord, that you have the strength and the power, Lord, to just be with me and to set me free. Lord, that I would live a life on this earth that's productive, that it's about you, it's about kingdom business. And Lord, that I would live with you eternally, forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me a captive free. May I serve you and love you all of my days. And from this point forward, may I be called Christian, a Christ follower. In your precious and most holy name I pray today, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me and accepted Christ in your life, this is only the first step toward true freedom. The best thing to do now is get connected with some people who really do care. How do you do that? Here's how. Check out the websites on your screen and you'll be connected with some people who really do care. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless you.